MIDI violin is a largely unexplored area of violin playing. If you want to plug your violin into a keyboard, you're going to run into some issues. Um, the biggest issue is audio to MIDI. A computer has to listen to your violin playing and know instantly what note you're playing. Now, I've worked a while on MIDI violin and I've found some solutions to these problems. And the problem of audio to MIDI is solved pretty decently with Jam Origins MIDI Guitar 2. Here are the settings I recommend for Jam Origin. Gain. Now you want proper gain staging when using advanced plugins like this. Tone and curve are all the way up because the violin has a higher range than the guitar and that makes this program more sensitive to that. Tuning, you want to keep that in standard because it makes the program more recognizing of sympathetic string vibrations and it'll filter those out. Polyphonic versus monophonic. Now monophonic tracks better, but polyphonic is so cool, especially when it works well. And some synths work better than others, so you know, uh, switch back and forth depending on whatever synth you, uh, you're using. Noise gate. Now, you want your noise gate all the way down as a violin player. Here's why. The guitar has a high attack pattern that slowly decays, and a violin player has a low attack pattern that slowly rises. And that means for MIDI violin that a noise gate will cut out that slow attack pattern of the violin and that creates additional latency and you don't want that so you want your noise gate all the way down. Bends. I keep that enabled at range 2 and here's why. We'll talk more about this later but when your bow grabs a string it detunes that string by about a half step and when you have bends enabled it is better at tracking your change in bow directions because it's listening to the bend pitch and it's saying ah he's bending up to the note which you are honestly and so we want to keep that enabled legato you want to keep that enabled because you are a violin player and <laughs> after touch you want to keep that disabled or enabled honestly it doesn't matter i keep it disabled all trigger notes typically have low velocity Velocity is the measurement of how hard you hit a key on a MIDI keyboard. Because the violin has other ways of controlling volume, you can just simply filter out low velocity notes. Because a noise gate adds latency, we need to use a velocity gate. Without a velocity gate or a noise gate, it turns every little sound into a MIDI note, and we don't want that. So let's turn the velocity gate on. Much better. The first MIDI tracking bug is this. When you lift a finger off a string, you create a little bit of noise. And that can trigger a MIDI note, and you don't want that. That's why the velocity gate is so important. It, you know, I can put my finger on the strings, and it will block the MIDI note. But if I try really hard, I can, I can make it do it. So, Depending on your playing style and the, maybe the type of strings you have, you need to set the velocity gate appropriately so that when you play, you know, you should be able to do this and have it not trigger. It's doing, it did that right now. <laughs> Bug number two is sympathetic string vibrations. So when I play G on the D string, my G string will ring sympathetically and the program might not be able to tell if I'm changing notes in bow direction or not. So, check this out. It doesn't quite work very well. But if I mute the G string from ringing sympathetically with another finger, it works better. There you go. The last bug is the most annoying and also the most difficult to replicate, but you heard it when I demonstrated the G string. That was a chromatic note triggering a half step below. There is no easy fix for this bug. Um, when your bow grabs the string, it detunes that string by a half step for about 10 milliseconds or so. But that 10 milliseconds or so is enough for the program to go, ah, we're gonna 
play that note and we don't want it to do that. So in the sense, the tracking is too perfect. Um, one solution is simply tuning slightly sharp and trying to mitigate it that way, but that you don't really want to do that, especially if you could hear the violin under your ear. You can detune it within the computer and you can do that. The solution that I have found works honestly best, you know, is detuning the string or detuning the audio, I should say, when I'm changing bow directions. Um, and there's two reasons I, I want to do this. One, I only want it to detune when I'm changing bow directions. I don't want it to detune all the time. Um, because reason number two is because if you detune, then you might trick the program into triggering a half step up. And you don't want that either. There are ways to hide false trigger notes through the sound of a synth. The first is a slow attack. A slow attack means a synth will start quiet and get louder, like a pad. Now, most false triggered notes are very short, around 25 milliseconds or so maximum. So a synth with a slow attack will hide false triggered notes. Some synths are fast attack in nature, though. You can't change the attack envelope of a piano. I mean, you can, but it, it'll sound bad, but or at least not like a piano anymore. The second way to hide false triggered notes is to add noise in the beginning of a synth. And this is common in EDM synths, where a synth will have noise that fades into the pitch. Kind of like this synth. So you can test if your synth will have a false triggered note by sending a short MIDI note, around 25 milliseconds or so, to the synth. And if the synth doesn't sound at full volume, you've passed what I call the hide test because you have made the mini note hide. So check it out on the piano roll. So you can still hear it, but when a false trigger note happens, the slow attack and the noise in the synth hide the false trigger better than a lot of other synths.